Welcome everyone. We'll give everyone a few more minutes to join and then we'll begin. Welcome everyone, we'll give everyone one more minute and then we will make a start. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us this Outpost 24 webinar today, presented by our senior pre-sales consultant, Barry Butler. Today, Barry will be discussing the art of multi-cloud security and a day in the life story from the front line, including a demo of CloudSec Inspect to show you the tools to help you optimize your cloud security controls. We will have a Q&A session at the end. Um, so if you have any questions during the presentation, please use the question box in your control panel and we will answer your questions at the end. Now I will hand over to Barry. Over to you, Barry. Thank you very much, Rebecca, and welcome everybody. I uh, hope you can all hear me and you can see my screen, which I'm sure you can. Mastering the art of multi-cloud security. One of, the, one of the key focuses at Outpost 24 is what we call full stack cybersecurity. It's here we look at any areas throughout the, throughout the enterprise, throughout the estate, where vulnerabilities could exist, whether that's in users and data, whether that's within applications, whether it's in network, including wireless, uh, or whether it's in devices themselves. But the key focus here, as it says there in the middle, is to look at what's happening in the cloud. And this is above and beyond what we may see in normal vulnerability assessment. Those of you familiar with Outpost 24 will know about our, certainly our OutScan and our high ad products, as well as what we do in application security. Maybe some people are not quite so aware of what we do in the cloud. And the key focus here is that the cloud contains vulnerability vectors above and beyond what you find in normal platform type vulnerabilities. And what we're going to see as we go through today's presentation and demonstration uh, is how Outpost 24, from a user perspective, can help mitigate those vulnerabilities that we find, particularly in cloud environments. When I say environments, very much within the cloud aspect, aspect I mean multi-cloud environments. So here we're going to we cover Google Cloud Platform, we cover Microsoft Azure, we cover Amazon Web Services. Uh, and that's quite key because these vendors themselves offer some security focus, but of course it's very much focus on their own environments. Once you break out into more than one environment, then their security platforms don't match up and they certainly don't form a single homogenous view of the risks within that multi-cloud environment. If we look at how we build up uh, a security view, organizations are being targeted perhaps all the time. They're certainly not choosing to be targeted, whether that's automated, whether it's focused, or whether it just so happens that organizations happen to be in the way. But in this day and age in 2019, soon to be 2020, there's almost no getting away from some sort of attack somewhere. So the best, 
the best approach is to try and close all the doors as much as can be done. And, and Outpost 24 with our product portfolio, that's what we're aiming to do. So think of the analogy of being within a cloud environment, that what we're going to do is check that, that all doors, all windows, all other egress points, ingress points of the property, the cloud environments, are as secure as they can be. I mentioned that we can do it with traditional type vulnerability assessment tools, and that's one part of what we're going to see today in a, in a limited fashion. But more, we're going to see CloudSec Inspect and how that can provide a view of the attack surface continuously. And again, we're now moving away from the typical scheduled type scanning approach to more of a dynamic continuous approach to cloud environments. A brief moment of humor, but in some ways this is quite true, in that cloud monitoring may just be gazing out of the window and looking at seeing a cloud and looking at a clear blue sky and thinking, well, everything is absolutely fine because I've got my cloud provider, they do what they do to protect the environment. Uh, and I'm doing all the steps that I do. I've maybe got firewalls in place, I've maybe got uh, some other mitigating controls, I'm doing my vulnerability assessment on my Windows platforms, my Linux platforms, whatever platforms I may have deployed in the cloud. And I've secured those platforms too, so everything must be absolutely fine, if only that were the case. In fact, in the cloud environment, there's a number of vectors that we'll see uh, that could actually leave these doors and windows open uh, for would-be threat actors. And some of these, some of these things are, uh, just as it says there, that the cloud providers, I guess to, uh, uh, to, to be nice to them, uh, don't charge you for things that they feel that you may not necessarily need. Uh, and these things could be, for example, logging or encryption, two very key factors with regard to cybersecurity. They are turned off and as we'll see, the, you do get warnings to say, if you turn these on, that you could incur charges. Uh, but on the other hand, when we see the Center for Internet Security benchmarks for the cloud environments, often they're referring to things like logging and encryption, saying that these should be turned on for these particular features if they're being used. Uh, and this, this connects to cloud configuration awareness, because now there's this extra wraparound in the cloud environment, not just the platforms themselves, not just logging and encryption, um, but the cloud configurations themselves uh, can also be areas of risk. Cloud is quite new. There's lots of people who maybe don't have the necessary skills involved to be aware of what's going on in the cloud environment. Uh, shadow cloud or shadow IT sprawl, cloud sprawl. It's now so easy to just say, well, I'm going to deploy these 10, 20, 50, 100 servers uh, into a cloud environment and which one do I know? Ah, yes, Microsoft Azure, that's what I know. I'm going to deploy them there, even though perhaps the organizational standard is to use another cloud provider. Uh, and these things grow and we see this, we see this a lot of times where customers say, well, yeah, we do use Google as our standard, but we've got some AWS and we've got a bit of Microsoft Azure over here. So even though it's not necessarily chosen, we see lots of shadow IT cloud sprawl uh, within different organizations that we work with. When, when something goes wrong, do not be surprised if the cloud provider says, oh yes, but that wasn't us. There was nothing to do, nothing we could have done to prevent that. That must have been something to do with your configuration or this particular S3 bucket wasn't encrypted or some other some other thing, some other issue that happened uh, that, that will sit quite firmly in, uh, uh, in the end user's lap. It's really great that what you can do in the cloud. You can make it as complex as you want to. You can have ma ma multiple security zones, you can have multiple different cloud providers, you can have all sorts of different things, provide lots of different applications, spin things up, tear things down, 
we're coming up certainly here in the UK we're coming up to the Christmas period suddenly retail organizations Black Friday's coming they want to deploy lots of additional servers to help cope with the demand uh, from from this time of the year if we try and compare that to traditional data centers and, and what we see there is you would have in a physical data center there'll be all these wraparounds not just the physical assets that are in there and the software that they're running but the wraparounds for the data center the access controls the flood prevention mechanisms fire detection systems and air conditioning systems all these that help to keep it running keep it available maintain the integrity maintain the confidentiality all of these security measures uh, that perhaps are taken for granted somewhat in the cloud they aren't the same but similar sorts of things exist similar sorts of things to be aware of above and beyond just the platform security that's been deployed and this can be any number of things as it lists there I mentioned login encryption before but by default if I deploy uh, a Linux type server into a cloud environment chances are that port 22 will be opened by default because that's the port I need to manage that platform that's secure shell and that's typically the the route in no pun intended, uh, into a Linux or Unix based system and then we're going to, we're going to see that later on how we can we can find and we can mitigate uh, those types of those types of issues uh, and again building up on that we can see across multiple clouds you can see the configurations assets in an infrastructure as a service environment need need security in just the same sort of ways even though it's different and bearing in mind the cloud providers are only monitoring the infrastructure itself and not necessarily the end users environment so let's look at what we hope to achieve with the demo that's going to follow this we're going to be able to provide guidance in how to improve cloud security workflow uh, including being able to automate the day-to-day -day vulnerability checking i mentioned already that we won't we won't have to look at things like scheduling scans we won't need to worry about scan windows we won't need to worry about scan blackout periods because for cloud tech inspect we are not looking at scanning across the network we are not actively scanning in any way this is a passive scanning type capability in which we read through the apis and the configuration information for all of the cloud environments so it becomes quite a, a relatively simple setup process because all we need to do is just to configure access to the different cloud environments and from then we can access the api and we can see what the cloud configurations look like we can look at how we can perhaps we need to integrate with other areas of the business because as organizations grow the responsibilities for the different areas different aspects of the findings that we see as part of this presentation and demo uh, is that it may fall into different areas and you need different interactions in terms of how to manage those findings and we can build on that and adopt a best practice approach uh, for our multi-cloud environments and lastly we'll also see how we can resolve some of the issues that we find because another key element of CloudSec Inspect and cloud security in general is that the, the resolution will not typically be like it is for an application where I need to reconfigure the application in some way. Not like it might be on a platform vulnerability where I maybe need to apply a patch uh, or I need to upgrade to the latest version of something. This is all going to be around configuring the cloud environment. So it's the cloud environment that, that the key focus is on uh, as part of today's webinar. So what I'm now going to do is switch over to, to the demonstration and look at from a, a very quick heads up view of Outpost 24 CloudSec Inspect. You'll see the dashboard dials across the top. These map to the Center for Internet Security benchmarks now it would be far too easy if all of 
the benchmarks for Microsoft Azure, for AWS, for Google, uh, all had uh, the same chapters and the same titles. Um, but of course, but of course they don't. That would be far too straightforward. However, we map to those those headings with the uh, with the donut type graphs that you can see there, even though that the section numbers may vary within the different cloud providers. And we can see there that we've got a number of different findings for uh, network and storage database, security and identity, monitoring, logging. And I can I can look at those in a number of different ways. I can focus uh, on different elements, should they be there in terms of the, the rating of that security. Maybe they're, uh, uh, maybe, maybe they're green, maybe that's good. But I've got a, some critical issues that, that I need to identify. And I can I can sort these in various different ways. I can even uh, multi sort these if I want to. Uh, let's uh, look at that order first and then go and look at uh, something different, different orders and so on. But my key, my key exercise here is being able to address some of these, some of these findings. And let's just, uh, just can take a look at some of these. I, uh, uh, being in the UK, uh, I'm going to uh, zone in on uh, uh, some some UK findings. Uh, as as an example, as a where should I look at my responsibilities in the UK? So I'm going to look at the UK to see what's going on here, uh, and I can go and look at any one of these findings, I can zoom in and I can go and see what do I need to do? What do I need to do for this particular one? What do I need to do for uh, over here, for example? What is this? And I come through and it will tell me not just what the findings are, but also what I need, then need to do to resolve that information, that finding. We can see here that this one is around uh, encryption for uh, an S3 bucket uh, that isn't configured. So I've read the API, I've looked at the configuration, I've found this vulnerability, this is what I need to do. And I can either resolve that by going in through the graphical user interface, or I can resolve it by going in through the CLI. These findings are directly referencing the CIS foundation benchmarks. I can, if I just go and uh, uh, drift over to here for a second uh, and I go this was finding 2.7 if we go and look at 2.7 uh, we can see here that uh, this is the finding reference in exactly the same way matching to the center for internet security I come back over to uh, my view here uh, and let's go and see how we can resolve this this particular finding so uh, these are the instructions here of what I need to do I need to log into the management console I need to choose trail, select a trail, uh, and then configure the encryption. Uh, so if I go over here, as you can see, uh, I'm logged in, I'm looking at trails. I come down to my trail down here. Here's my S3 bucket. Uh, choose this particular trail, uh, come down a bit further. Let's select this one. Just scroll down a bit further. Here's my change the encryption. Uh, I can choose this uh, and I choose uh, how I want to uh, select uh, that encryption to work. And the recommendation is that I use the Amazon Web Services key management service. Uh, and that's what I've selected. Uh, I can quite simply from there choose my save button uh, and that resolves that particular uh, information uh, requirement rather. Uh, and there we are. We can see that will go away. That will do that, uh, and that will be that will be resolved. Of course, not every finding is going to be a configuration type issue within within the cloud environment, like we just saw. Maybe some of them, as we can see, there are different uh, sections here. If I go and look at uh, networking, for example, and if I go and see what what issue I have there. Uh, we can see that I've now got some issues regarding uh, regarding networking firewall rules that allow access uh, into the environment. Uh, let's 
so for example, one of these I mentioned about um, I mentioned about SSH access to uh, to my um, uh, AWS environment here to my uh, Linux platform that I may have deployed. If I go and look at a typical uh, Outpost 24 or a typical vulnerability scan that I may uh, that I may have produced, uh, and I come down here, look at those scan results, and find there's not very many findings. Now, the reason there's not very many findings is this is a, a default deployment, but also the good news is that I haven't configured anything on this platform apart from it being uh, an Ubuntu platform. And so because of that, it's uh, allowing uh, SSH to this platform. So when I go and look at uh, this particular platform, we can see that my findings are all around. You can see these are AWS assets. You can see my findings are all around SSH type access. If I scroll down here a bit further, uh, we can see uh, we can see those those types of findings. Now that would be because I'd allowed access through my security group to those particular that particular uh, port, for example, that particular application. Uh, and if I go and look here. Uh, this may say things like, let's, uh, let's just choose one of these. Choose one of my inbound rules. Just accidentally press the wrong button. Don't you just uh, don't just love it when that happens? Okay, here we are. So typically, I'd get a finding to say that I'd allow default actions to that particular port because that would be my default setting. If I didn't tune it, then then that setting would be found. I can change this. Uh, and what we'll see as I go through and change these is we can then pick up these as being a, a new finding because this would be the default configuration if my security people hadn't already configured it. So by default, all of those, it will allow access from anywhere, i.e. 0 .0 .0 .0, uh to uh, my SSH port on that platform. And that's because, of course, AWS wouldn't know where I'd be connecting from at a moment in time. I, I, I put, it was set as an individual IP address, but in actual fact, it could be from any number of IP addresses, not just my one individual IP address, because from an organizational perspective, you may be connecting from many different IP addresses. So it couldn't necessarily know that uh, the I, what the IP address is that I'll be connecting from. So by default, it opens up the connection to everything. So you then have to go in and tune that, but it may be that you wouldn't necessarily know that that had to be done. And as I say, by default, it'd be left open, not just for this platform, but for every platform. As we saw from my scan results, that I had three platforms that I needed to make changes to. Two of them are running uh, within my European environment and one's running on my US environment. And I may need to have made changes to all of those to maintain my security posture. And it's an equally similar issue with, uh, with this particular finding, finding here. So I then need to to work through all of these to resolve uh, the different findings that I may have. Now, it may be that I, I don't need to worry about that. I'm quite happy. Uh, I'm running some sort of SSH platform that allows everyone to connect to it. And I may want to not restrict access. I can't imagine that would be the case, but let's just suppose that that was the case. Uh, and if that was how it was, then I could maybe go and mitigate that by not allowing access uh, 
on port 22 to SSH if I wanted to. Notice also that uh, while I'm in this particular configuration setting, I'll just make that a little wider so everyone can see. But if I look at the different cloud providers, uh, if I look at uh, AWS, for example, uh, you can see here that there are 51 different checks for AWS. Uh, apart from the apart from the top two, we can see that the actual hardening AWS foundations, i.e. the ones from CIS, uh, number 49. But that won't be the same for, let's say, uh, Microsoft Azure, where apart from the first one, we can see that there's there's going to be 90 different findings for Microsoft Azure. Uh, and so it goes on. Uh, the, the Google number, I think, is something like 71. So it's different for each platform. So that probably concludes what I was going to show as part of the demo and how you can manage your cloud, multi-cloud environments. Just reset this so we can uh, we can see we could have seen uh, Microsoft Azure if we wanted to. Uh, Just seeing there are, there are more of those here appearing. So what I was going to do now as I finish the demo section, I just wanted to recap on uh, some of the things that we've spoken about. Uh, so we've seen uh, about the multi-cloud coverage where we were looking at uh, different cloud platforms. We've also addressed the control plane versus the data plane. So cloud security posture management in terms of cloud configurations versus cloud workload workload protection platform in terms of the actual security of the platform itself and it's only when we join those together do we have a comprehensive solution for having uh, having cloud security that that covers all of across our cloud our cloud environments uh, and we can look at things like being able to continuously scan so I'm constantly looking at the API. I don't have to, as I said, I don't have to sh schedule scans in any way. I can automatically discover assets as they come online because I'm reading through the API information. We reference the CSI benchmarks. So we reference what the Center for Internet Security does in terms of defining how to best harden your cloud environments just as in the same way we do with our NetSec family of products, where we secure the platforms themselves. So if it was Ubuntu 16.04, if it was Windows Server 2008 R2, Windows 10, if it was Apache Web Server, the same benchmarks we use for securing those platforms, we use for securing the cloud. And collectively, that all forms part of the Outpost 24 full stack assessment, our approach to maintaining a secure cybersecurity posture uh, by measuring vulnerabilities wherever they are uh, across the across the enterprise. And the the approach we we use for that is let me just put this on uh, full screen mode. That's that's much better. I can see it now. If I go on to the next slide very much our focus is starting in the top right there where we identify what assets are out there what what wireless networks are out there what applications are out there what where do i need to what what do i have how, how can i start to secure what i have if i don't know what i have so we can identify what there is using mechanisms that are relevant to that particular environment if it's a cloud, then I need to use some asset detection mechanism, reading the API, for example, uh, or I can uh, use other methods to identify the assets. If they're physical assets somewhere, then maybe I do a discovery scan. If they're applications, then maybe I can use some sort of application crawler like uh, Post24 Scout product to detect what applications might be out there. Once I've done that, I can assess 
uh, where I need to focus my remediation activities. So I can look where, what my weaknesses are, I can determine what those weaknesses are, and I can move that towards where do I need to now focus my attention to reduce those risks. We saw in the, in the cloud environment that perhaps uh, there were some ports left open by default, there was some encryption not enabled by uh, default that I then need to go in and change. It may be that I need to get other departments involved because I may not have that full access. It may be that uh, I mitigate those in, in other ways and I can then perhaps turn those controls off uh, or approach it slightly differently. But what it does mean is I can focus my risk reduction activities uh, to what would benefit my organization uh, the best and the easiest. And in many ways, that, that completes what I was going to talk about today. Uh, so I'll just say a few more words uh, about Outpost 24. Outpost 24 and the CloudSec Inspect product is all part of maintaining a security posture across public cloud environments. Now, whether that's, uh, whether that's Google and AWS, whether it's AWS and Azure, whether it's Google and Azure, all three or any combinations thereof, uh, our key focus is being able to offer protection measurements using CIS benchmarks to make sure that any risks that may be apparent are made visible to yourself, to ourselves, uh, and being able to then look at how to better manage those findings uh, to, to reach a, a suitable protection level uh, against all of those vulnerabilities. And that really completes what I was going to say today. So uh, we'll now move into the, the Q&A session. Thank you, Barry. We'll go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a reminder that you can use the control panel um, to ask your questions. Um, Barry, it looks like we have a few questions from the audience here for you. Um, first question is, is it better to use multi-cloud? So I may be touched on this earlier on. There's no, there's no hard and fast rules for which cloud provider to use. Uh, and we certainly have no affinity to one or the other. What I have found talking to talking to people uh, that I meet is that there are preferences depending on what the requirements are. Uh, large data maybe works better in one cloud provider. Uh, no names mentioned, but somebody used to working with large amounts of data. Uh, others work better if there's perhaps more uh, more instances required, or maybe it's a, a cost basis depending on the nature of the applications being deployed. So there's no there's no real uh, argument for whether one should be used over another, but there may be particular requirements that a customer may feel suits one cloud provider uh, more than another. That's great. Thanks for that. And finally, um, final question here. Do you support Google Cloud and Alibaba? Uh, so Google, we support Google Cloud uh, as of today. So uh, today was the, the announcement where we included Google Cloud in our uh, uh, multi-cloud environment. So at this moment in time, it's Microsoft Azure, it's Amazon Web Services, and it's Google Cloud. That's great. Thank you. It looks like we've covered all the questions for today. Um, I'd like to thank the audience for listening and Barry for your uh, really good presentation there. Um, we will circulate the slides and the recording afterwards to everybody. And thanks again for joining and we'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye.